It's a sign It's like we're twin flames in a different life Deep connection Lights a spark It's like you know me in the depths of my heart We're dreamers Okay, so welcome on board again. Got quite a lovely one this week. This one's making the bed. Yeah, it's a bit tricky. I've done it the wrong way around. Just done it the wrong way around. Tonight we are entertaining. We've just arrived at the boat, and tonight we are entertaining. I'm just about to start preparations. Very late on preparations. Uh, I'm going to be doing some cooking, which is nice. Um, what we're making. Pear souffle, uh, and which will be interesting in this oven, but it should be all right. And stuffed chicken with smoked cheese, spinach wrapped in parma ham, and uh, a red wine jus, some sauteed potatoes, sauteed wild mushrooms. Super easy one, uh, and we'll see whether our guests like it. And the guests uh, we have this evening are the previous owners of Crazy Diamond, which is always lovely. So uh, I need to get cooking and um, then by the way we're going to Brightling Sea so we're going to sail down the river out to the North Sea around the coast uh, and to Brightling Sea tomorrow night so um, well tomorrow day going first thing in the morning so uh, yes let's crack on. Okay so uh, starting with the pear souffle on peeling and uh, chopping up some pears. I've got four pears here and half a lemon uh, just for the lemon juice, which we're gonna stick on a pan here, as you can see, with some demerara sugar and reduce that down on a low heat, uh, just to poach the pears. Uh, now chopping up some potatoes for the sauteed potatoes, uh, give them a good rinse, get rid of all the starch uh, and then boil them um, for about 10-15 minutes to just parboil them, get them soft. Uh, within the water, obviously season well, uh, got some herbs in there, rosemary, thyme uh, and also I like to boil them in some beef stock as well, just to add that flavour. Getting those boiled up. P.S. Yeah, so I decided to do this voiceover because it's much easier than me waffling on uh, on the video. It's too long. Um, so preparing the filling for the smoked chicken, uh, smoked chicken, smoked cheese um, and spinach fill. So we're going to chop some spinach up here, some seasoning and the smoked cheese. You can use whatever cheese you want, but I found this um, smoked cheese, although it's probably not the greatest grade, the only one I can find. Uh, it just works really well and it, it creates almost a nice creamy sauce inside. Prepping the chicken, uh, so this is for filling, so just open up the fillet, uh, score down the side here and uh, what you need to do is be careful obviously not to pierce it, you can open it up in that section and then if you hold it open and just flick the knife, peeling and picking away, it will create a nice hole that will, uh, will allow you to put stuff in without needing to um, sort of chop through the chicken or, or completely open it up. Just doing the rest of the chicken now. And once that is done, I can get the chicken stuffed and then I'm gonna wrap these with Parma ham. Stuff in the chicken now just literally grab yourself a little handful and just shove it in there and, and squash it up as much as you possibly can get it nice and full uh, and then wrap it with the parma ham uh, i am now preparing a pub all those drained off the potatoes and preparing them for uh, roasting so you need plenty of olive oil some seasoning lots of salt and pepper uh, and I'm going to use some herbs on there as well, so some oregano, some thyme, some rosemary, and then just finish off with some flecks of uh, butter, uh, which will just give them a really nice. We're doing a nice, nice meal, so a little bit of butter doesn't help. And the chef's secret, as everybody knows, butter adds a lot of flavour. So if 
two flicks of butter and then into a nice hot oven, um, about 180, 190 for about 20, 30 minutes. The, the key with potatoes like this is to go nice and slow, um, well 180 uh, for, for a while and then you can just crank up the temperature at the end if you need. Uh, I'm now saving some of the poached pears. You can see they've gone down nicely. There's not a lot of liquid. Saving some of those whole pieces for later. They'll lie in the soup plate dish. And then I'm blitzing up the rest into a puree, which we will use um, for the, uh, the meringue mix. You'll see that later. I'm passing it through a sieve just to get rid of any lumps because for this puree with the meringues, you need it nice and smooth. Uh, preparing now for the stock uh, or the jus, dicing up some shallots, some garlic, uh, get that nice and fine into a pan with a little bit of uh, olive oil and butter, saute those off. Preparing the chicken now, it's a nice hot pan, which we struggle with on the boat, it never seems to get that hot, um, but they can go in there, nice hot pan, and you want to sear those off on, uh, on all sides just for about five or ten minutes, then they can go on a tray and into the oven. I'm making a bouquet garni here, which is parsley, thyme and bay leaf. That goes in there to the stock pan. And I'm gonna add a good glass, I'm making enough for, for four um, here, so a good, good glass and a half of red wine. And what you wanna do with the red wine is let it simmer down, so you can see there it's, it's sort of a, an inch or two above the pan, that's how much we start with, and that will reduce down so it's just glazing the top of the pan. It will go nice and thick and that will just sort all the flavour out, knock the alcohol out of it and, um, and really enhance things. Uh, I'll put some sautéed mushrooms in the pan there with some garlic and parsley. Stock is going into the jus, and here we are plating up. So I've cut the chicken in half, not the greatest presentation because I was very uh, busy and chatting and entertaining, but just cut them in half and you can see that it almost makes a lovely sauce um, just on its own with the cheese that melts out nicely. They've been in the oven for about 35 minutes, still nice and juicy inside and plum and crisp. Mushrooms on the side and then finishing off with the glaze. Now just to finish the jus off, um, you always just want to add a good knob of butter at the end, um, stir that out and all is good. Prepping the ramekins now for the souffles, so you want to uh, butter those um, and usually with a brush and butter all the strokes upwards which helps them to rise and then sugar, uh, I've used golden caster sugar. Um, just line the, the butter with the sugar, stick some sugar in there, spin them around and, and then just pour off the excess. Egg whites into a bowl and give them a really good whisk. Um, once they've got to the fluffy stage and they're holding, add the uh, golden caster sugar and then give it a really good whisk. You can't whisk too much. You always need to do more than you think. So get it nice and thick. Now we're saving about a third of that uh, egg white. You want to take about a third and just put that to one side and then you add in the puree uh, that we made earlier. Now that's what's going to flavour the meringue uh, and flavour the souffle. Um, I've put a little bit of that um, into the ramekins along with the other pieces that we've saved, so four or five little pieces at the bottom. Uh, mix that up. You don't have to worry too much about knocking all the air out. And then we've got our final third that we've saved in that needs to be careful. Fill the ramekins with your meringue and then smooth off with a palette knife if you've got one. I didn't, so I've used uh, just a normal knife. And then this next bit is a key to how souffles rise. Use either your nail or you can use the edge of your light knife to create a, a lip uh, that you can see here. Now this is really, really important, and that is basically what will guarantee your, your uh, souffles to rise, the one you mix it all correctly. Into the oven for about 10, 10 minutes, 12 minutes. You need to watch uh, the oven, it's about 180 um, fan. Now these have risen lovely. Uh, they're a bit crispy on the top, uh, a bit more color than I perhaps would have wanted, but uh, 
all was good and I guess loved it. Good morning all. So it's uh, just before seven in the morning. Been up since about four. Got out of bed at about quarter six, six o'clock. And I've just got everything prepped and ready. Lines, fenders, took the hood off, filled the water tanks, etc. And then we will be off to Brighton so shortly. Marina's very quiet and sleepy, which is nice. Hopefully a nice sail. Forecast 10 to 15 knots. We're downwind all the way. Should be lovely. Sorry about the engine noise again, but there's no wind at the minute. Although we are forecast a downhill run to Brightling Sea once we get out and about. We've got northeasterlies, so it should be all good. About the right sort of speed as well, hopefully. No. Just us. And then we will potentially have a beat all the way back tomorrow, so that'll be fun. Yeah. Weather's all right. Sun and cloud. Apparent. So it's all right. Three knots overground currently. I fit a new white pad on, which is much better. So it's protected.
69, yeah, at Cedar. Yeah, 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 no, it's, it's definitely a pleasure one. We'll follow you, don't feel like you've got to stay behind us because you're not going to for very long. <laughs> Let's face it. Yeah, definitely. It's, it, it'll just literally die here anyway, so. Yeah. What's happening? Um, I've just had a little kind of a cat nap, but you can't really sneeze. We're quite smelly, so if we let go, we're just going to roll onto the floor. So Pretty rolly. I just had a little cat nap because we're out in this stretch of water and there isn't really anything to do. And we haven't got the wind we thought we'd have, so. Not at all. We're motoring, so it's the noise of the engine and all the way. Yes, not good. We're doing four and a half knots. We've got, oh, trying to fall over. Three knots of apparent, 3.94 knots of true. So that's not great really. Debating whether to put the main down because it's just flapping left and right. Very rolly, but it's lunchtime soon, so that's all right. Yeah, I know exactly. It's typical, isn't it? Lunch time, so she wakes up, starts looking round, see where the food's coming from. Giles is uh, out in front, miles down there. I've just checked on his AIS. I think he's doing about seven knots. Unfortunately, our boat won't go that fast. We're at pretty much maximum chat for us and we're doing four and a half knots so I think we've got a very dirty bottom because it didn't normally go this slow so I know, but we were hoping to have her out by now but yeah we, we, we yeah needs a scrub scrub a dub dub so there we go yeah that's about it sausage rolls for lunch Ooh, look at those White wine and parmesan sausage rolls. From our butchers our in Newmarket, aren't they? Tenants, give a shout out. Big shout out to tenants. Yeah. Best. Charlie's now got lunch. A rolly boat lunch. Chuck it all on a plate. I've decided to save washing up. And just go straight for the bowl.
right and you can see no. Just over there. Basically motored all the way to try and catch the gels up. Doing a bit of sailing, which was nice, but the odd 20 minutes here and there, but the wind was just uh, not really with us. And we have to be in here for as close to high water as we can. Well, high water was at 20 past one, it's now three o'clock. So we, um, yeah, need to be in because there's a tidal, it was restricted here. So you have to cross over a ledge. But apart from that, it's been very uneventful, which is always what we look forward to. And it's been nice. That over there, see those two towers there was where we got absolutely battered the other week well the other I mean, about three or four weeks ago now so yeah we're uh, it, it'll be interesting because we've got North Westerlies again tomorrow and we've been very rolly today so we'll be beating into that tomorrow on the way back so we'll see if we can do a bit of sailing tomorrow we should do because it's 10 knots of wind and um, it's coming from exactly where we're going but we might be able to do a bit of tacking so we'll see. Giles is uh, hopefully moored up now just for a look on the vessel finder so that's all good and uh, always lovely because he's done all the hard work and found the mooring and he'll just tell us where to go. Be there to catch our lines, hopefully. Oh, we have to drop the sails. here so this should be interesting we're rafting up wind's picked up a little bit tides are roaring and there we go we are full side two yeah that's a So we've just picked up our Chinese with Giles and Michelle and a couple of pints in the local sailing club which was lovely and then we've got to wait for a water taxi.